So here's a couple of the metabolic algorithms. So let's say the OptiChem, OptiChem blood analysis shows that the CBC, the white cell count, is high or low. The ratios of the neutrophils and lymphocytes is all off. So we say, hmm, the immune system is, something's up with the immune system. So the first panel we get is the T and the B cell and natural killer cell panel. And just a, a, a brief kind of overview of, of how the immune system works. We have what is called the T regulatory cells. And that is really the, the regulator of the entire immune system. We have T helper cells, which is kind of like the accelerator pedal. So if something comes in that we don't like, a bacteria, the T regulatory cells send us message. And most all these messages are sent via hormones or hormone-like substances. And then the, the T helper cells uh, multiply. And that causes an increase in cytotoxic T cells or a natural killer cells, something that is real specific to what um, the invader might be. We also have something called the T suppressor cells, which are, you know, the T regulatory cells um, signal to them to say, that's it, it's okay now. And the T suppressors multiply and they call back in the natural killer cells and the B cell, the cytotoxic T cells and the B cells. And, um, and that's, and the, all these guys, the T, B, natural killer are like your Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines out there doing the actual battling. And the T suppressor helper and regulators are um, like home base giving the instructions. So on that panel, we'll get um, a measurement of your T helper to T suppressor. And if that T helper uh, to suppressor ratio is above a two, we say you have an active antigen, which means you have an active invader. You have something foreign um, that your immune system is activating to on a continuous basis. If that number is below 1.5, we say that you have, um, well, it could be normal, or you have an immune dysregulation if, if some of the T and the B natural killer cells are off. But back to the active antigen, we have to look at your barrier system. So we have something called an intestinal barrier test, which literally measures um, how impermeable your intestinal tract is. So if it begins to become more permeable, like the lining is actually breaking down, imagine the skin breaking down on your body, um, it starts to cause immune activity because things get into your uh, in, inside of you. So you eat and waste product and undigested proteins are crossing into your bloodstream and it creates an active um, immune process. You could be eating dairy and you're genetically allergic to dairy. So and, and you might not be aware of that because there are different levels of reactions in your immune system. The IgE that's the type of protein, immunoglob immunoglobulin E, are those fast reactions. You drink milk and your eyes swell shut. You're pretty aware of those, so you don't drink milk anymore. The ones that we pick up on are the IgG, immunoglobulin G. Those are more like slow burn. They activate your intestinal immune system and are still very toxic to your system, but they are more subtle in their presentation you could have an active infection. And kind of the same thing, like not all infections cause coughing, sneezing, stuffy head, fever type of reactions. There are many intestinal infections that are very subtle, like H. pylori. Most people don't know they have an H. pylori infection until they have a hole in their stomach. It's associated with ulcerations. Um, and most people, or some people, don't know they have a hole in their stomach until they bleed out and die. So we want to know ahead of time, what's going on with that immune system? Is it active? Then we better find it, because it can be serious in the long run. Or if we fix it, it can be fine. We also want to consider toxic exposures, um, heavy metals, mercury, pesticides. Um, you know, we have so many environmental chemicals right now that it is possible that just the toxicity of our environment can begin to uh, cause immune activation if your body can't keep up with what's coming in. If it's immune dysregulation, so let's say the uh, T helper to T suppressor ratio is less than 1.5, but your cytotoxic T cells are super high, 
and there doesn't appear to be a reason for it, we call that immune dysregulation. It's a, just a dysfunction. So we balance, we suppress, we activate the sides, the areas of your immune system that need support. And the, um, the similarity in medicine when, uh, when there is something seriously going on, like a cancer, what they do is just suppress. They just, and they don't even look at this T and B. They don't even know what needs to be suppressed. They just suppressed, and they use very aggressive drugs to suppress. So they only use it in very dangerous situations. Um, we can do the same job by looking at where it needs to be suppressed and using uh, botanicals, nature's medicine, to actually get it back into order. I think that's a much better uh, process for you know, dealing with cancer or dealing with autoimmune disorders um, than, you know, suppressing your immune system. Because if there is an active, let's say there's an active antigen, let's say you, you have developed cancer and maybe the long ago trigger was a, a food allergy and you continue to eat gluten and that's what you're allergic to, you suppress your immune system and maybe you succeed and kill the cancer or whatever it might be, it's still there. You still have not diagnosed the food allergy. You still have not diagnosed the active antigen. You never even look to see if there was an active antigen um, because medicine doesn't commonly test this. So we need to test this to figure out what's going on. And of course you could have both where we need to go back and balance, suppress, activate, and find any active antigens also. So that's how we kind of go down the list. Opticam tips us off that there's an immune system process doesn't tell us exactly what it is, so we run another test, we ask more questions, and we find out we have to ask even more questions. And so we ask more questions, and we find, hey, there it is, and it gives us the process. So let's see. Um, it <coughs> if you have a gluten allergy, what would be the treatment? Yeah, you stop eating gluten. <laughs> now, you still may need to uh, re- you know, reestablished uh, regulation in your stress physiology, your hormones, and you might even re need to rebalance and re-regulate your immune system after you get rid of that. Um, but that's, you know, once you find it, it's pretty self-evident. You know, there's subtleties of like, how do you do this balancing? And I can't get into that because it's a very long topic and I probably do more, uh, more classes, more uh, videos on that. But Right now we just want to show how we get through to the finding that why.